Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayers for Wednesday evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Psalm 19 The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows forth the work of God's hands. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading, continuing in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, picking up verse 8, after the rather well-known and perhaps more palatable section associated with carol services of those who've walked in darkness will see a great light. Isaiah continues. The Lord sent a word against Jacob, and it fell on Israel. And all the people knew it, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria. But in pride and arrogance of heart, they said, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in place. So the Lord raised adversaries against them and stirred up their enemies. The Aramaeans on the east and the Philistines on the west, and they devoured Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger has not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. The people did not turn to him who struck them, or seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. Elders and dignitaries are the head, and prophets who teach lies are the tail. For those who led this people led them astray, and those who were led by them were left in confusion. That is why the Lord did not have pity on their young people, or compassion on their orphans and widows. For everyone was godless and an evildoer, and every mouth spoke folly. For all this... His anger has not turned away. His hand is stretched out still. In place of an Old Testament song, we continue to listen to beautiful, in my view, Advent carols. And this next hymn, tonight's carol, is for me one of the jewels of the old Methodist hymn book one of the finest and most beautiful of Advent hymns. Hark, what a sound, and too divine for hearing, sung tonight by the choirs of Blackburn Cathedral.
the evocative power of music, taken right back to my home church in East Anglia, then up to Northumberland, across to Cheadle, and to the present day. Hark, what a sound. Our New Testament reading, St Mark chapter 1, verses 1 to 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we continue with Tom Schumann's wonderful Alphabet for Advent. And tonight we reach the letter R and we listen to James Hadley, associated with Abbots Road in Leicester, as he reads this to us. There are a lot of folks who believe that what Advent is all about is getting ready for the return of Jesus. You know, when he comes diving out of the sky on a white horse, leading the heavenly host, probably heavily armed, to put an end to all the terrible things we do to others or what they do to us more than likely. They anticipate cemeteries erupting like volcanoes as the chosen are carried up to heaven. They look for the seas to boil, the sky to fall, and all sorts of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious things to happen. That's what the return is all about, this coming again of Jesus. Or is it? Might it be heralded not by armies with massive amounts of weapons, but the return of peace, as the primary way to solve disputes among nations. Might we look for Jesus, not in the conquering hero vanquishing all enemies, but in the neighbours who open their hearts as well as their homes to refugees? Might Jesus return, not as the head of some political party of whatever persuasion, but whose policies are the best for everyone, but as a mother holding the hand of her child in a caravan of folks searching for safety? When Jesus comes again, might it not be as one of the angry voices which is always calling down judgment on everyone around them, but as a reconciler who speaks with civility and grace? As we gaze up in the sky looking for signs of Jesus coming, might we need to return our eyes to the earth where folks are working against all manner of opposition to keep creation from crumbling around us? Instead of longing for a new Jerusalem where only the privileged, the few, the elect are welcomed, perhaps it is when justice returns to our cities, to our rural areas, to every place where the most vulnerable live and hope, where the broken yearn for healing, where the lost wander looking for community, where every person is loved and valued and accepted, that we will recognise Jesus is in our midst again. Just when we think God will finally return to be one of us again, we will find God is already one of us in the children born in poverty, in the parents working three jobs, in the needy who offer all they have to others, in the lonely who offer a shoulder for the grieving to cry on, in the stranger who cares for us better than our family, in the most vulnerable who are the least judgmental, in the least privileged. R is for return.
We follow that with a prayer by Tom Schumann, inspired by Psalm 33 and verse 5. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. In this holy season, may we love righteousness more than receiving gifts, justice more than the jingles in stores. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, at the ending of this day, and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness, that we may take our rest in peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have promised to make all things new. Graciously enable us to prepare for the coming of Christ your Son, that he may find us waiting eagerly in joyful prayer. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise for ever. For you have given us a share in the inheritance of the saints in light. In the darkness of this passing age, your saints proclaim the glory of your kingdom. Chosen as lights in the world, they surround our steps as we journey on towards that eternal city of light where they sing the triumphal song. Open our eyes to behold your glory and free our tongues to join our song with theirs. For great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the ages. To you be praise and glory, now and for ever. Amen. Lord God, we ask you to give us your blessing. To your church, holiness. To the world, peace. To this and every nation, justice. And to all people, knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families. Protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. On this night, having been challenged and reassured by that reading of the return of Jesus, less among us with anger and might, and more among us in gentleness and kindness and care. Let us give thanks for all whose kindness, gentleness and care enable us to feel encouraged and loved and valued. And as we give thanks for such in our lives, we ask for commitment and strength to exercise the same kindness, gentleness and care towards others. Enable us to potentially encounter you in each and every other person, whether they be those whose presence and company delight us, or those whose company stretches our tolerance and patience and sanity. Bless, we ask, each and every conversation in which, through our words, the return of Jesus may be more real. And we pray for the congregations of this East Midland Synod, praying tonight in particular for our ministers, elders and members in the churches of Lincolnshire, with which Peterborough is also included for us. We pray in particular in the Lincolnshire area of Synod for those churches in vacancy, for Peterborough, St Andrews and the surrounding resource area, 
for the North Lincolnshire area. And we ask for God's blessing upon the South Lincoln Pioneer Ministry that will begin in January. And we turn our prayers to those for whom we have been praying and who have asked us to pray for them. We pray with Celia for Alfie and for Alfie's mum, dad and sister in their care of him. We pray with Alison and Paul for James. With Uncle Taya for Sarah. With Hatra for Ali and Faranas, Yaghub and Masome and Human. We pray for Charlotte, giving thanks for the update from Martin that the journey to and from the hospital in Kent has happened, all is well and ready, and we pray for them as they now isolate together so that on Saturday Charlotte may be able to have her operation. We pray for them in this isolation, for safe travel, travels and those who will conduct that surgery. We pray for the Reverend Michael Pevy and June and for the Reverend Les Gill recovering from COVID-19 giving thanks for his ministry among us and asking for healing. For each of these we pray and ask that the love of Jesus described in tonight's reflection may be real for each for whom we pray and those whose names held in the quiet chapels of our hearts may also know the same blessing and we ask all these things through Jesus Christ our Lord our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen.
Good night.